Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I would like to talk about a little bit more detailed information concerning rooting hormones. So it is a little bit of a contention here because there are a lot of uh, elements involved where you can actually use a natural element, something that you can actually use from a kitchen and also some uh, things from your own garden especially this particular one the aloe vera and also the onion i also would like to touch a little bit more on the chemical ones the ones that have been sold in local nursery here but for now i want to talk a little bit more on the aloe vera and the onions uh, one of the things that i've noticed here there are so many kitchen counter types of rooting hormones and this particular one the aloe vera and the onions are normally used around the southeast asia regions and i noticed that somehow it really works best based on certain regions now the preparation is almost exactly the similar with most of the elements when it comes to onion and aloe vera you just have to cut them slice them and put them in blender and a little bit of water and just get them blended and use that as a rooting hormone where you can just dunk in the cuttings for 15 to 30 minutes and plant it back so basically even onions will be the same uh, method that is being used. One of the things that I want to make an emphasis here is that when it comes to aloe vera, it is so versatile that you can also use it as a fertilizer. So there are no hard and fast rule here of exactly what is the correct measurements that need to be used. Uh, in some cases, two onions will be used. Or in some cases, two aloe vera alone will be used. <laughs> and if at all, if you're a little bit more into the adventure, you can use two onions and two aloe vera or one of each. So in, in a way, you can either use one of it or both. So what i find here is that in my context on what i'm actually using i'm using two uh, matured leaves of aloe vera and, and i only have one onion in my hand so i'm just using that uh, it, it is no hard and fast rule as i mentioned earlier see what actually works now when it comes to southeast asia region i believe it's because of the weather of humidity and a rain factor and this kind of things actually carry a lot of weight when it comes to root hormone one of the most main factor that i find is that when i look at gardeners and growers especially farmers they tend to use onions and even aloe vera as their rooting hormone and that gives me some thoughts where i find that exclusive plants such as uh, sensitive plants and rare plants that grows in southeast asian regions and they were using these as their rooting hormone and i believe that because of this essence this particular uh, materials make able to have higher element of success in comparison to the rest of other types of course you can try and each garden is different and unique in their own way and i find that only you will know by trial and error i also noticed based on my experience that i find that one of the highly specialized expensive nursery sell a particular type of fertilizer that contains aloe vera and i believe it is very high in its premium prices so in that context i believe that aloe vera does carry a lot of weight when it comes to rooting hormone and as a fertilizer now the best part about living in my region is that aloe vera grows very easily so in a way i believe that it could be a factor where when it comes to manufacturing and producing such a small amount may be very costly and thus the product is expensive so in that context that's what i'm mentioning is that if you can have able to grow aloe vera in your place easily then by all means use that as your rooting hormone material otherwise use what you can get your hands on based on what is available in your region 
When it comes to onions, there is no hard and fast rules that you have to use a specific type of species. We can actually use red onions or the small onion or even Bombay onions, which are whichever onions that you can get your hands on. And I think that will just works best because as long as it has its element of value of being an onion, I think that is just good enough. A little bit information concerning the conventional chemical type of floating hormone. I have used this few times, but I find it's a little bit more difficult and proof unsuccessful to me. Perhaps it could be because of the method that I've been using. Maybe I've over applied it, but somehow I find that it, it really didn't work. So this was the initial one that was available before other rooting hormone was actually being introduced and i just want to show to you in the way that uh, what was conventionally used way back then about a decade ago and i'm still keeping this bottle uh, i find that even the cutting just grow without using this and in most cases sometimes the cutting dies in rot so i actually lost uh, the confidence of using rooting hormone because somehow I just find it doesn't really work. So sometimes it can be a scam in, uh, in, in a way that sometimes you try it doesn't really work. There's a lot of trial and error that took place during the years ago and actually I more of given up hope when it comes to rooting hormone. Only then after some parts of research and maybe a better uh, premium quality rooting hormones actually works so these are the things that you have to experiment and see and only then we will know whether it works or not there's another one that i want to show to you this particular one is known as b1 this particular uh, product is actually sold in thailand actually managed to get it and you can see everything is written here is more on a thai language Sometimes certain things do not really have a brand. So this particular one is just identified as a rooting hormone and it's labeled as B1. Somehow I believe the B1 is actually vitamin B1, vitamin B1 which actually aids the plant for rooting hormone. In a way I find that this actually works but in a very strong dilution. So uh, again there's a lot of contention here that some people say it works, some people say it doesn't work. But for me it works but uh, I just use uh, maybe be like two or three drops of it or maybe a cap full in a half bucket of water so a lot of things that actually go a long way and i find that it also have a reverse effect when you use too much of it so in a way i believe that it could be less is more and there are the things that you have to consider when it comes to volume uh, sometimes it is very difficult to say based on how much is actually needed so a lot of it is actually based on trial and error now all those is actually based on introduction now I'm coming back to the preparation of how I do the rooting hormone basically it's very simple just clean up all the onion onion pieces and cut them to pieces also the aloe vera same method just cut and chop them accordingly uh, of course just washed off all the debris and take away that is some things that is already dried or burnt just keep it as as clean as possible because uh, you are planning to keep them in storage in a fridge so I want to keep them as long as possible so these are the materials that I've used two slices or sorry two leaves of aloe vera and one onion which has been finely chopped and basically I'm just going to blend it a little bit of water I don't want to pour too much then it may not blend properly just enough to that it'll turn into pulp and everything is nicely blended as you can see over here after blending this is how it appears to be slightly in green tone there will be a little bit of uh, onion smell in it and a little bit of a green uh, fragrance of aloe vera uh, don't make it too watery then you may not able to stick on the stem when you actually place them into the for the rooting hormone to work i have actually managed to strain it and taken out this piece and actually pour a little bit more water and i've also blended it for the second time so you, you can do that if you want to 
uh, I, I don't want it to be very juicy I want it to be a little bit more pulp kind uh, but it doesn't really matter because what is very important is the uh, nutrients behind it there are also some gardeners who also use cornstarch together with it to make it a little bit more uh, how do you say sticky in a way that when you put the cuttings in it'll sort of like stick together with it uh, so basically uh, this is what I have done and uh, I have managed to put all of it in a bottle so why is this important in a sense that this is a, a lot and it can actually last for one to two months so what I have done here is I've, I've labeled it and I've actually put it in the fridge you can also put it in the freezer if you want to uh, but for my context what I have done here is that by doing this uh, I can actually keep it for months and of course it is right now is in green so try to use it as much as possible as in a way that uh, if you are planning to do this routine homework do so where you have a lot of cuttings to do and once you have propagated it and then you plant it so what is the factor here is that eventually uh, this rooting hormone the color may turn from green to brown so do not worry about it what you can do is that you can actually convert it into a fertilizer so the portion will be basically more on um, one tenth of the um, the portion to dilution of 10 so maybe like a, a cap full with half bucket of water the other thing here is that method of using is very similar where you just put it in a cup and let it sit for uh, 15 to 30 minutes and then you just take it out and just poke it into the soil matter now it's very important thing that you have to notice that do not leave it overnight do not leave the cuttings overnight or two three days one the whole thing will just rot away so that's why i say it in a sense that uh the measure of it is less is more so these are the things that you have to care for it in a way that it can have a reverse if uh reverse uh, issues where if it's overused so do take note about it not to uh, overly use it in the way that i mentioned here is that maybe two two is best um, they don't really have to use like 10 aloe vera leaves or 10 onions because basically that is overwhelming and may be very acidic for the cutting and the whole thing can rot away so these are the things that i actually use once the cutting has soaked for 15 to 30 minutes all you have to do is just, just uh, poke it into the soil media and basically that's as straightforward as it is as using a rooting hormone just to make sure that you have two nodes that is clear that has been soaking into the rooting hormone before placing it into the soil media once done just keep it in a bright shaded area until you see any new growth that takes place within one week's time basically as straightforward as that this this is how i actually grow them in my garden this is just a summary for the rooting hormone i will actually come more in a detailed version of it when i'm actually planting this particular plant it is actually the rose jasmine so I've come to the end of my video. If you have any questions, do put them in a the comment below and I'll try my best to answer based on my experience. If you can, please do click like and subscribe my channel. Thank you and have a nice day. See you again in my next video. Take care and have a nice day. Bye.